Rose is 87 and can no longer live on her own. So she has to live here at the Onondaga Center for Rehabilitation and Nursing. The only saving grace that I have is that my mom has dementia and she doesn't realize what's going on. Right. The center used to be called The Crossings. It was taken over by the Onondaga Center on September 1st. Since then, the sisters, along with other families we met with, say they've witnessed several concerning behaviors. Someone had an accident on the floor. Oh, okay. And people were walking through it. She's fallen and been on the floor trying to crawl to her bed, not being able to make it because she's slipping in her own urine. They say the lowest point was over the weekend when just one nurse was left in charge of 40 residents overnight. We reached out to the center. They said that was true. In a statement, a spokesperson said, Our four-star rating by Medicare.gov for above-average staffing and quality measures attest that staffing is clearly not an issue. And while yes, that is true, but if you look at the center's overall rating, it was at two stars, with its health inspection at one star. So we looked at the New York State Department of Health website. They say there are more than 200 complaints per 100 beds, with more than 50 citations. But these citations stem back more than a year under the prior owner. So we called the New York State Department of Health asking if they've done any more investigations and here's what they said. These inspections are unannounced. Therefore, the department cannot confirm or deny the existence of an investigation at Onondaga Center for Rehabilitation and Nursing. So until then, the families say they feel helpless. Every day when we are, we're entrusting that she's in a facility that's going to care for her and provide for her, but we're scared for her safety, we're scared for her well-being, we're scared for her life. The center says it is committed to ongoing improvement and has increased its staff training. Back to you. Gino joins us in the newsroom this evening. She spoke with a current employee at the center. Olivia, what did that employee have to tell you? Well, Ron Christie, that employee had a lot to say. They said after seeing our report yesterday, many of the employees were saying it's about time. The employee claims to have seen many of the things families brought up to us, including food and medication being given out late and residents being left in their own feces, partially blaming the lack of staffing. In an ideal world, we're supposed to accommodate every resident between every hour and two. We barely have time to spend five minutes with a resident. We reached out to the facility again today with a list of questions after our interview with the employee. The facility declined a response, just reiterating a portion of their statement from yesterday. I'll have that coming up at 6 o'clock. Jimmy Sullivan just celebrated his 50th birthday inside the Van Dyne Center. He's lived there since 1989, but recently his mom, Susan Langley, believes his care has gotten worse. Extremely worrisome and to the point where it's sometimes hard to sleep at night because when you leave there, you think, what's going on after I'm leaving? Is he going to be okay? He can't call out for help. Her breaking point came over the weekend when heat in the facility was shut off. You know, you think, it just feels like air conditioning, but it doesn't make any sense for it to be air conditioning, but that has, has happened before. The center's administrator says the problem started Saturday due to complications from construction. Since heat was out for more than four hours, he had to alert the State Department of Health. But by Sunday night, he said the system was fixed and being monitored. The, the facility right now in most areas is uh, about 70 degrees. But we've been hearing from families all day who say that's not true. We tried reaching out to the administrator multiple times today and have not heard back. 
But Susan says this issue is just the tip of the iceberg. She's also unhappy with staffing levels since the Upstate Services Group took over management from Onondaga County in December of 2013. If you look at the center's staffing review on Medicare.gov, it's rated below average, with the state health department receiving more than 130 complaints per 100 beds. The state average in that category is fewer than 50 complaints. Those numbers from the state health department are from 2013 through last year. We asked a spokesman about any current investigations. Here's what he says. The New York State Department of Health takes the health and safety of nursing home residents with the utmost seriousness. The department's investigation into heating issues at the Van Dyne Center for Rehabilitation and Nursing is ongoing. As this remains an active investigation, we cannot comment further. And we will continue to update you if we hear more. Outside of Van Dyne, Olivia Eugenio, News Channel 9. Well, Christy Rod, we were sent a statement about an hour ago saying they are deeply troubled by recent complaints at the facility. It goes on to say these complaints do not reflect our standards and values and are counter to our mission of an unwavering commitment to the well being of each resident and family member. Now, I'm told Van Dyne has launched an internal investigation. Meetings are being scheduled over the next several days, and we should hear more about a plan to address complaints by next week. It's a glimmer of hope for families that have been pleading for action. It, it was horrible. Isabel Lee is living a mother's worst nightmare. Her son Jesse had his second stroke last April and hasn't been able to live at home. And she's worried the tube in his throat isn't getting cleaned enough at his new home at Van Dyne. My drinking door say was more had mold in it, but she. Took it out and she watching it. She and her niece Audrey have been fighting for Jesse's care to improve, begging to talk to administrators and the state. Now, I haven't gotten anywhere down there. I don't even know what administration looked like because they don't answer the phone for one. I left messages. Um, and then you'll get told they're not in. Administrator Patrick Deptula stopped returning News Channel 9's phone calls weeks ago until we finally showed up at his office. The only news outlet to sit one on one with the administrator after numerous complaints about heating issues in the facility. There have been no uh, issues with any residents being compromised in terms of their health, welfare, and safety. Since the statement was released, I did request an on-camera interview with an administrator from Van Dyne hoping to address specific questions about the quality of care. So far, that request has been denied. Christy.